Hi, my name is Colin Ford, A28 co-creator. My friend David is going to actually explain to you how the game works, but before I turn it over to him, I wanted to talk to you about a couple differences between the Zoch version and the American version, which David is going to use to clarify the game. So other than the fact that the cards look a little bit different, the main difference is that the American version uses chips to build the pot and the Zoch version uses these crystals. So whenever David says to put a chip in the pot, just think to yourself, put a crystal in the pot. Now, you can see here that there are two different colors of crystals, blue and red. The blue crystals are worth one point, and the red crystals are worth two points. And the way it works is you use the blue crystals to build the pot and play the game until they run out, and then you start using the red crystals. That makes the end game a little more exciting. But the first time you start using red crystals, that means that is the final hand of the game. Other than that, the two versions play exactly the same, and I'm going to let David take over the explanation. Thanks. Hey, David L. Hoyt here. I am one of the co-inventors of 828, and I'm going to try my best to teach you how to play. Okay, so first thing is that you might see two boxes here. This is the U.S. version. This is the, the European version. Pretty much the same game. It's the same, it's the same rules, except this one uses chips to build the pot, and this one uses crystals. They're both very cool. All right, so again, I am going to try my best to teach you how to play, but you know, I don't know that I'm necessarily great at teaching you how to play in a video. So what we've done is we've included down farther on this page, you'll see some videos of a whole game or one video, maybe, maybe more, I don't know, maybe we'll add some more over time, but it's going to be a video or more of a whole game being played out. So hopefully between what I show you here and then you watching a whole game being played out with a whole bunch of people, you'll get it. So here's the way it works. You're going to shuffle up these cards. And then, so for this, I'm going to demonstrate it with three players. You can, we've played up to nine players, but I'm going to show you with three players. So the way it works is you deal out one card, the first thing you do, face down. Actually, that's not true. The first thing you do is you start with two chips in the center. That's the beginning of the pot. And this is going to be the 828 pot. It's eventually going to get split into two. It's going to be, it gets divided in half, and then the 28 pot, and then the 8 pot. All right, so I've dealt a face down card to everyone. Now, so actually, I'm, I'm player three, player one, player two. So there we go. Player one, player two, player three. So now I'm going to ask player one if they want a card. Well, I'm trying to teach you how to play, so we're going to cheat. Hey, sorry to interrupt. 828 co-creator Colin Morgan here. I just needed to pop in for one quick clarification. David forgot to mention that at the start of every hand, each player looks at their own face-down card. And they can look at it whenever they want to. So when David talks about cheating, he's referring to the fact that he's showing everybody what all the face down cards are. But every player looks at their own face down card at the start of the hand. That's it. Back to David. So this player has a six. Player one has a six. Player two has a nine. And player me has a one. Now, when everybody passes, the hand is over. So if I say, would you like a card? And player one says, no. And if I say, player two, would you like a card? And player two says, no. And player me says, no. Then it's over, okay? But it's likely not going to be over that fast. So player, player one here has a six. They're probably not going to take a card. The way this is going to work is, is you're trying to get the closest to eight or 28 without going over, and it's a combination of your face-down card and any face-up cards. Now, player one has right now a pretty good chance of winning the eight pot, but it would just be one chip, okay, which is very unlikely that, that, that that's going to happen. So they're probably going to pass. Player two, let's see what they have. They have a nine. Now, player two is... They are. They cannot win the eight pot. They have to go for 28. They are over eight. The second that you're over eight, you have to go. So player two would likely take a card in this case, and they are dealt a 111. Now, I should have pointed this out earlier in the game. There are a lot of ones in this deck, okay? Lots and lots. If you lay out this deck um, face up, you'll see that there are a lot of 1s and a lot of 111s. And there's a reason why. And you'll see the more you play why it's important that there's so many 1s. It allows you to take, a, take another card, take another card. So 
now that player two has taken a card, I actually don't have to take a card because as long as one person does, it goes to the next player. So I'll show you what I have. I have a one. I like to have ones, okay? So here we go. Now, on to the next. So now player, player one is dealing and another chip gets added to the pot. Every time it goes around and it goes and, and the deal passes to the next player, another chip is added to the pot. So now player one asks player two, would you like a card? So this person now has 10 or 20, depending on whether or not they use this as a 111, okay? Or it's a one or an 11. So they might take another card. I'm not gonna explain exactly why. You'll get a feel for it once you play it a few times. But let's just say that they take another card. Ooh, they have another one. See, we don't know that he has a nine. We're, we're thinking that player two is still going for eight. We don't know that player two is over eight. And again, I've got my one, so I'm going to pass. I have this tendency to where if somebody takes a card, I usually pass. There's no reason for me to take a card right now. So now the deal goes over to player two. Boop. And another chip gets added to the pot. So now if the pot were to get split into 8 and 28, there'd be two chips in, in each. Okay, so now player two, there, there's, there's a slight advantage to being the dealer because you go last. So player two, they know that they would win the 28. They are closest to 28 right now. They could count that as 21. So here we go. I have to decide, do I want a card? And I'm kind of afraid that it's going to stop. So I'm probably going to take a card, okay? So I take a card. Ooh. So now I have a total of six. That's pretty good for potentially winning the eight pot. But again, I don't know what that, you know, what that player has. And then this player says, hmm, I don't have to take a card. They're going to pass. And then player two here, I'm not sure what they would do. Let's see here. Let's, they would probably pass. If they're like me, they would pass because... I've already taken a card. So now the deal comes back to me, and then boom, another chip gets put in. So now, player one, would you like a card? Hmm, they're sitting there with six. They're probably assuming that I have six, okay, because you always assume that this card is a one because there's so many ones in the deck. They might take a card here. They really might take a card, but... You know what? Let's assume that they do. I haven't stacked this deck, so I have no clue what's coming next. So let's assume that they do. Uh-oh. That was not the card they were looking for. They were hoping for a 1 or a 111. So now we know that they are over 8. So they, they have to go. Everyone knows that they have to go for the 28 pot. All right. So this player is probably like, nah, you know what? I don't need to take a card. I'm definitely not going to take a card because now I'm kind of in control of the of the eight. So now the deal moves over to player one. Another chip gets added. And now player two, they might be getting a little worried that they're, they're trying to get to 28 is, is, you know, maybe in jeopardy if this person has a 111. I'm not sure, but let's assume that they take a card. All right. So now they are sitting here. Okay. They have... They have 10 or 20 plus what they have in their hand. So they're definitely going to count that as a 10, okay? So they, they're sitting there with 19, okay? Now, I am not going to take a card because I feel like I'm going to win the 8 pot, which is true. I definitely am going to win this 8 pot. I do not need to win to, to take a card. I'm just hoping that it goes higher and higher. It goes around and around. All right, so now... The deal moves over to this player. Another chip gets added, which is good for me because I wanted to get as big as possible. They're going to ask me if I want a card. There's no way I'm taking a card. I'm pretty confident. I'm 100% confident that I'm going to win the eight pop. But see, they don't know that. They don't know that I have a one. You know I have a one. They don't know that I have a one. So they might think that I'm going to, in, in, in theory, no one might win the eight pot. We all might be over eight. So now this, this player two asks, do you want a card? And I say, I do not want a card. No chance. You know, I think that player one over here would probably want a card. Okay. And there, now they're at 19. We don't know exactly what's going on here. I mean, we do because we've cheated. But in real life, these two would be battling it out for this 28 pot. 
So, this person would probably say, eh, he took a card, I don't need to take a card. Deal moves on to me, another chip gets added, and the pot is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So now, this person really has to decide. They're sitting there with 19, they're sitting there with 25. So, a pretty good chance that they're going to win the 28 pot. They are closest to it. So, they, and they are sitting here with 10 and 9. So, they, they have 19. So, they might pass. This person said, I'll take a card. Okay, so now they've got 25. I'm passing. Deal goes back over here. Another chip gets added. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So we've got 16 showing, plus this is 25. And over here we have 25. This is amazing. I did not set it up this way. All right, so now, of course, they don't know that they each have 25. So this person is thinking, oh, there's a lot of ones in the deck. What am I going to do? I think they're going to think, oh, the next card is going to be a one. Ah, oh, it's not, okay? Now, here's the thing. They've just busted. They are over 28, but they don't have to tell anybody that they're over. As long as these cards don't add up to 28, they can keep going to try to get this person to go over to, to, to go over 28. So this person is going to try to, you know, pretend to be, oh, this is exactly what I needed, but it really wasn't. I, of course, am going to pass because I'm hoping that I'm going to get that 28 pot. The deal goes over here. So now this game is, or this hand is just about coming to an end. This person is thinking, hmm, that person here easily could be over 28 and be bluffing. Huh. So what, what, so I've already passed. I've told them I've passed. So is this person going to take a card? They're sitting with 25 and they're looking over here and they're going 16, this, this person is sitting there with 23. I think that this person might not take a card, okay? That they're gonna pass, that I've passed, they're gonna pass, and that this person is gonna pass, and it's gonna end it, all right? So the hand is officially over, and then everyone flips over their card. I've got six, this person has 25, and this person says, I'm over, okay? So this person is out. And now the way this works is the pot is split between 8 and 28. So everything goes like this. All right. So this person gets the 28 pot. I get the 8 pot. And there you go. But there are some things that could have happened here that would make this very, very interesting. For one thing, if this person had busted, had gone over 28, and they were both out, I would win the 8 pot and the 28 pot because 6 is closer to 8 and 28 without going over. Also, it's possible to get what's called a perfect hand. And a perfect hand is, is our two 111s. And anything that adds up to six, it's, as long as it adds up to six, it doesn't matter how it is, okay? So here's the thing. Here we have, if we hold them up this way with the 11s up, you have 28. If you flip these over, you have eight. It's called a perfect hand, and it actually trumps everything. It beats everything. So you would actually win the 8 pot and the 28 pot. Even if someone had 8 or 28, this is the perfect hand. It wins them both and it's fantastic. And try not to do what I do. Sometimes when I get the perfect hand and I know it, I, 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 I scream a little bit like, ah! So you don't want to do that. You don't want to let anyone know because when you have the perfect hand, you want to get the pot bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so again, you know, it, if 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 this wasn't enough, if you if you if you you know study this a little bit, watch this, and then watch the whole game played out below. I'm hoping that it's enough to uh, teach you how to play, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much for buying 828. I hope you love it.